What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm going to be showing off a rogue deck that you don't see too often but funny enough this deck has access to one of the most broken literally one of the most broken cards ever printed in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Now we're going to get into it when we get into the deck profile however if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We do deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, uploading five days a week here on the channel and recently we've been doing a lot of anti-meta anti-tier limit stuff because we all know tier limit is a tier zero deck so if you guys do enjoy make sure to subscribe but also like this deck legit when i say is so hype because it gives you access to a card that no other deck really can play but this deck can abuse and it's insane so with that guys let's get right into the deck profile all right so just before we get started with today's video i do want to say this deck is something that i haven't seen online in a long time but it has access to what I think is one of the most broken cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a card that has very niche application, but this deck can abuse it, which is insane. And of course, we're doing Phantasm Spiral in today's video. So let's get right into it. I'm going to get into the main pieces of the deck. I'm going to explain my choices, but this is an anti-tier limit, anti-meta build. So keep that in mind. It's built to beat the tier zero. However, it's also just really good into a lot of matchups as well. And that's because you get to abuse literally one of the most broken cards I've ever seen. Okay. So so let's get right into it. First of all, we are starting off, of course, with three Pacifist, the Phantasm City. This card is the heart and soul of the deck. You need to get to this card. This card puts token monsters on your side of the field, pretty much the only monsters that you're going to be summoning. And it's your win condition, essentially, right? So you have to be playing three of this. We also have ways to get into this, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but we do have to be playing three of this. Maxing out is so important. Then we're playing three Phantasm Spiral Battle, as well as one Phantasm Spiral Power. Now you might be wondering, why are we playing Phantasm Spiral without the dragon, without the equipment? spells well to be honest with you those cards are just too slow they don't actually help you win games they are more like win more cards these are what you need in today's metagame essentially what power does is it acts as like an imperm slash effect veiler for you spiral battle this one lets you pop any card on the field that's the really cool thing about both of these this card does not have to pop a monster it targets any card your opponent controls and destroys it this is kind of one of your outs to Paralarino, or it's one of your outs to mystic mind if your opponent mystic minds you even though this is a deck that doesn't really lose to mystic mind but in general it pops any card on the field and then power acts like is an imperm or veiler imperm and veiler are not too great in today's format however against a lot of rogue matchups this is a pretty good card that's why we're playing the one of and then for the only real monster we're playing is the best monster yet you can play in this deck and that's three megalo smasher x so the reason it's the best one it's because it's the highest attack water monster that you can play that's a normal monster but on top of that it's a dinosaur which means that it's searchable through fossil dig so this is literally the best one you can play in this deck and also keep in mind that the token that Pacifist gives you is not a dino, it's a worm. However, it is a water monster. So that actually provides some synergy, which I'm going to get into later. But this is a water. Megalo Smasher X is also a water. It's also 2k attack. Again, this whole deck is supposed to just be beat down and not letting your opponent play. Now, what are some ways that we can't let our opponent play? First of all, we're playing three dimension shifter. I think shifter is just way too important in today's format. You don't really lose to shifter in this deck, so it doesn't really matter that you're playing it. So this card is just so important. Of course, you know how powerful this card is against the tier limit matchup but you can imagine how powerful this card is against decks like sprite and just any other rogue deck in general because a lot of decks do use their graveyard even though they're not using it maybe as much as tier limits but you know banishing all the sprite cards or the soul soul cards all the dragon link cards like that becomes very relevant so shifter is just really good overall but of course against the tier limit matchup is very important and then this is the most broken card that no other deck really can play but this deck can abuse and that is heat wave so many people forgot about how powerful heat wave is let me just read it out to you i think you guys can see it right there above me but the, at the start of your main phase one so it kind of has that like extravagance condition where you have to do it first this has to be your first action but at the start of your main phase one neither player can normal summon or special summon effect monsters until your next draw phase this is essentially a turn skip for your opponent how insane is that let's say you don't have shifter let's say you don't have any of these big crazy cards all you're going to start off with is activate heat wave and then you're just basically saying your opponent's not playing forget scythe scythe locks your opponent out of the extra deck this card is just much better this card is insane it's literally one of the most broken Yu-Gi-Oh cards in the game today and i'm not even exaggerating when i say that because it literally just says your opponent can't normal or special summon effect monsters 
period. So unless you're going up against a mirror match, then I don't know how your opponent is playing around this card. This card is insane. It helps you get set up. Now keep in mind, yes, you're not going to be OTKing a lot with this. However, if you're just turn skipping your opponent with cards like Heat Wave, with cards like D Shifter, then that gives you more time to get into your floodgates, get into your traps. And then once you set up a board, it's going to be very difficult for your opponent to out. So that's why I think this card right here, Heat Wave, is one of the most broken cards in the game. And the fact that this deck can abuse it is insane. So of course, we're playing three Heat Wave. We have to be maxing out on it. And then we have have a ton of draw power in this deck first of all we're starting with one card the demise keep in mind you guys can see we're not playing that many monsters literally outside of megalo smasher x and shifter i guess but shifter is just more one of those things that you're going to be pitching anyways so card of demise is really really good in this deck we're playing three pot of prosperity as well as three pot of duality so let me explain why we're playing three and three. First of all duality and prosperity do not conflict because if you guys don't know duality says add it does not say draw now i know a lot of people know this but i always get a comment saying why do you play duality and extravagant against or why do you play duality and prosperity it's because it literally just doesn't conflict right so that's why we're playing three and three we need to get to our floodgates as fast as possible we need to get to our broken cards as fast as possible and that helps us we also need to be able to get to our field spell so of course these help us get into the field spell the only thing that does conflict here is card of demise with your pot of prosperity but again you're playing three prosperity versus one demise so the odds of you drawing them together are not that high on top of that even if you do draw them together you can look at the rest of your hand and see what you need more you need more floodgates you can go prosperity to guarantee yourself a floodgate i shouldn't say guarantee Guarantee, but you know give you the highest odds of drawing a floodgate versus card of demise right then you can just hold the card of demise for the next turn so even if you do open both by any random means you can still play around it with your hand which is great but another thing is usually i like to play extravagance in these trap decks however in this deck specifically you can't actually play extravagance because it has the same condition that i mentioned earlier as heat wave it has to be your first action in the main phase so heat wave says at the start of your main phase one you have to activate it but then if you go heat wave you can't go extravagance and the same thing goes in vice versa right if you activate extravagance you you cannot use heat wave so for that reason we're not playing the extravagance we're opting into the prosperity as well as the three duality and then just for more consistency we're playing three fossil dig again this is why megalo smasher is your best normal summon in this deck or the best normal monsters that you can play in this deck it's because it's a dino monster and it's a level four normal water as well so fossil dig is really powerful because it just gets you to that monster that you need and then we're playing a lot of floodgate cards and this is essentially where we get into the anti-meta stuff we're playing dimensional fissure fissure is a powerful card it's the same thing as shifter essentially nothing hits the graveyard that's really important playing the one mystic mine of course you have to be playing mystic mine unfortunately like i know it sucks but this card is just too powerful especially when you're going second and you're forced to play a slower game state you need to be activating mystic mine so of course we have the one terraforming to get us to mystic mine if we need if we already drew into our phantasm city and we're also playing the one metaverse to guarantee ourselves a field spell the field spell in this deck is one of the most important things in the deck so you really need to see as many cards as possible to get to this and then as soon as you do you're in a good spot right again we're only playing the one mystic mine when you're forced to go second you can actually bump this up to two i just thought you needed the one because let's say you already opened this you can terraforming into mine or you can metaverse into mine so for that reason i think the one in mine is just perfectly enough and then we're playing three summon limit you're not special summoning in this deck you're literally summoning only a token at most plus maybe your megalo smasher so at most you're summoning two monsters and your summon limit locks you into two monsters so this is going to hurt your opponent a lot more than it hurts you we're playing three skill drain of course we're playing only normal monsters so for that reason skill drain just makes sense i mean you're not activating any effects your opponent is so skill drain makes sense we're playing three goes and match remember how earlier i talked about megalo smasher being a water the tokens being a water that's why goes and match is really powerful because all your monsters are essentially going to be water monsters on the field and so goes and match just helps you floodgate out your opponent so you're playing nine floodgates here all cards that are really good into today's format skill drain maybe not so great against the tier limit matchup but of course this is just good against every other matchup and it's one of those things that's just very necessary in this deck again you're playing normal monsters why wouldn't you play a card that says no effects essentially right so that's why we're playing the skill drain and then lastly we're playing the one macrocosmo because like i said earlier we're playing the macro the shifter the fissure all this stuff your opponent's cards should not be hitting the graveyard and you don't want them to hit the graveyard that's why you're playing the one macro cosmos so that's it for the 40 card main deck you guys can see how much hate we're playing we're playing like one card that literally shuts out your opponent this is a turn skip one of the most broken cards in the game we're playing shifter which is a very broken card as well we're playing mystic mind fissure we're playing macro we're playing floodgates all of these cards are so important to see and again that's why we're also maxing out on the consistency like the duality the prosperity the demise plus the fossil digs because now all this deck is is broken powerful cards as well as consistency cards to get us to the broken powerful cards that's all the deck is that's all you need the deck to be so that's it for the main deck it is 40 cards moving on to the extra deck here the extra deck doesn't matter so much i mean there's a lot of space in this extra deck you don't really have to force anything in the extra deck but because we're playing prosperity we just want to play multiples of cards i mean you can also swap these out for like one ofs or two ofs because you're playing prosperity over something like extravagance but we're playing here three dweller dweller is really the best one because again it's so good in 
into today's format. But on top of that, it's a water, so it plays under Gozen for you. And because you're going to be making with your Mega Low Smasher X, it's actually going to be able to gain 500 attack as well. So that's very relevant. So we're playing three Dweller, three Dolka, as well as two Lagia. Typically, I like to banish like multiples of these. You can also keep in mind, cut these to two and play other cards in your extra deck. The extra deck is not that important. Again, like I said, we're playing Zeus as well, just in case if it ever comes up. And then we're playing Super Poly Targets, two Starving Venom, two Mud Dragon, and then the one Garura. Because I am going to be showing you guys a side deck. You guys can see here that there is a side deck. The side deck, again, is up to personal preference. If you guys have a locals where certain decks are more prominent, then you can build the side deck for your locals. However, this side deck I just wanted to show because I think it works very well with this deck. So for the side deck here, we're playing three Lava Golem. Of course, when you're forced to go second, Lava Golem is really important. Helps break boards. Three evenly matched. Again, when you're forced to go second. This deck is so good going first. Like, it's so tough to lose if you're going first with this deck because there's just too many broken cards in this deck that if you're going first, you're going to set up. So going first is not an issue. It's going second that becomes an issue. So again, three Lava, three evenly matched. We're playing the three Soul Drain. Soul Drain, of course, is really good into tier limit matchup. It's really good into some other matchups as well, but mainly the tier limit matchup in today's metagame. And the thing is with Soul Drain that I do want to mention as well is that the reason it's not in the main deck is because something like Soul Drain is just really niche against tier limits. You have so much tier limit hate already that it kind of doesn't make sense to play more tier limit hate in the main deck because then you end up playing against a Sprite player or a Dragon Link player or a Bistid player and then it kind of doesn't really do as much for you. So that's why I think Soul Drain just makes more sense in the side deck. We're playing the three. There can be only one. There can be only one is really good against the Flunderies matchup, which is also still a very meta relevant matchup, but it's also good against the Sprite matchup as well. And then three Super Poly again, just to go second and break boards. So I think this is a pretty balanced side deck. You're playing nine cards here to break boards, your Super Poly, your Evenlies and your Lava Golems. And then when you're forced to go first against specific matchups, you have the cards to out them. Soul Drain as well as there can be only one. Now there are cards like Necro Valley you can play as well. You guys can maybe squeeze in a Necro Valley into the main deck, but I think Mystic Mind just made a lot more sense in the general sense. But you know, Necro Valley is another great card. There's just a lot of options. But again, this deck, you guys can see it's all consistency and all broken cards. Heat Wave, I'm telling you, this card is one of the most broken cards in the game. I think it's one of the most broken cards ever printed. But again, it does have that condition that you can't normal summon or special summon effect monsters that applies to you. But the really cool thing about this deck is that you're never going to need to do that. So I think you guys should try this deck out for yourselves because it's insane. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is the Phantasm Spiral deck profile. This deck is insane. I know it might be a rogue deck, don't get me wrong. However, I think it's one of those anti-meta decks that just goes so hard. If you guys go first, if you guys win the die roll, you're winning the game. This is just too broken, right? And then the side deck, like I showed you guys, is built to go second so that you are able to break your opponent's boards. I think this deck is really, really cool. Again, it's not going to be a deck that you're going to take to a YCS and top a YCS with. However, However, I think this deck is a really fun, really cool option in today's format if you don't want to play tier limits. And if you guys did enjoy, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on Spanko. Deck profiles, dual videos, combo videos, product openings, vlogs, all that good stuff right here on the channel. So thank you guys all for watching. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers. I believe in every single one of you. I think we can get there. Hopefully by the new year, let's make it happen. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.